<laughs> All right, so I'm just bringing this up on the screen real quick. Um, these are the instruction locations for installing Git and Garrett. Um, the Garrett stuff is on the bottom of the page, which is why I have the note to scroll to the bottom of the page. And all of these links are in the, the etherpad, right? Yes, Which I put I them in earlier when I also emailed everybody earlier in the week. Yeah. And I did share the etherpad in the chat. This is where one of those times where I'd be walking around the room making sure everybody's okay and how you're doing and, and stuff. So this is kind of awkward for me. <laughs> Tomislav, Ivan, how are you doing? No news is good news. Thomas Love has Git configured. And do you have Garrett installed yet? Thomas Love? Oh, we have someone else who's not showing up on our list. We have more people. Sweet, we have lots of people. There's a down arrow on participants. Welcome, everyone. So if I don't call you by name, it's just because I've just realized we have a downward button on the participants. Um, but if everyone can let me know um, where you are on the Git and Garrett install. Um... Hey, Elvis is here, too. I know. I just saw that. Good to see you again, Elvis. Thomas Lava, if you go to this link, oops, I just sent it to Kindle for some reason. Um, that has the instructions for Garrett and it, you'll need to scroll to the bottom of the page. Forgot to bring my lawyer for the agreement. Yes, it is Git review, Thomas Love. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of sent the information out ahead of time. Um, because the very first time we did this in Tokyo, someone said they couldn't sign up without their company approving it first. All right, we do have a yes, no feature within Zoom. If everyone can just hit yes once they're configured for Git and Garrett. Hi, Elvis. That would be Hi. really great. <laughs> yes, you do need to join, which you kind of already did when you got your user ID for the summit. Um, you do not have to join as a foundation member anymore, but you do need to at least sign up as a community member. But let's go ahead and just make sure everyone has getting Garrett installed and we'll go into the accounts shortly. Is there anyone who does not have Git and Garrett installed on their machines yet? Not necessarily configured, but just get the basic packages on. Well, I'm so I, maybe I'm just missing something. So I'm I'm doing the Garrett part, but I don't see an actual client. I'm looking at 
where it's talking about SSH key pairs and this other stuff, but I don't see that there's actually. It, a it's actually going to be the com commit your the command you're actually going to use is git review. Um, so there isn't really a client. You just need to install the basic Garrett. Is that not on the page? I'm not. Maybe I'm just missing it. I'm I'm seeing stuff for SSH keys and. And I see, you know, going in and doing your public key settings, and then it it just talks it, it, about Git review. Okay, so underneath where it says Git review. Oh, there it is. I I just <laughs> found it. The pip install. Yeah, that's that's why I put that part about scrolling in the bottom of the page. I knew there was something weird there. Um. Yeah, maybe we should reorder that Kindle and put installation first. We can, uh, that can be a thing. Someone can fix Someone it. Someone can get a patch in today and be a contributor. Oh, yeah. Wow. Plus to it. And I know somebody that I can ping to get it workload too. So it'll actually be merged today. Ivan clicked yes that he is installed. How's everyone else doing? I'm actually having a harder time finding the uh, yes in Zoom than I did finding <laughs> the apt command for Garrett. So <laughs> I'm I'm good. I just can't find the button. <laughs> Look at the right. participants list, and then at the bottom of the list, there are the options. Oh, the There's yes, no, go list. slower, there go faster. Is. Yeah. There. Yes. Go faster. I don't want to move on before anyone's ready. And unfortunately, I can't see everyone's faces to see if you're stuck or not. So we're relying on yes and no. Are you just walk through the list and call everybody's name. It's like roll call. Did you finish this thing? Yes. Whether typed or verbally said, who cares? Like Elvis, I know is already configured. Kind of makes me want to buy like a, a Chromebook. Well, it wouldn't, Chromebook would be hard, but like some sort of small laptop to be able to like walk through all this again. Yeah, I updated some of the um, screenshots and stuff, but I couldn't, I didn't want to make another stacking McStack face. So I'm not 100% sure on the OpenStack Foundation whether our screenshots match anymore or not. Tomas, Tomislav, Jeffrey. That could be another thing someone could do. Take a screenshot and save it and then update the documentation. Yeah. I should be writing these things down. So if they don't happen today, we can make people do We it can do it this way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll go make stories and contributor storyboard. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide just to keep us moving here. So as we kind of mentioned already, I'm actually not on my working computer. Okay, Tomas, that's good. Jeffrey, did it into the meeting, so I'll get behind you there. Now. Okay. So we're just going to go over the different accounts um, and make sure everyone's signed up. And also, any agreements are signed. Um, this will especially become important for Garrett. So, if you have not signed up yet, which everyone pretty much should have at openstack.org/join, um, because you did need an OpenStack ID to get into Summit. Now, whether you 
joined as a community member or a foundation member. I'm not sure how that worked. And I'm going to go let a dog out because he's crying at me. <laughs> My husband's making breakfast. That's a big no-no in my house to do so without Dalmatians. And one back. All right. Um, so I should go through. So this is the screen you should be seeing. This is one of the new screenshots. So this is slightly different than it used to be. But this will give you an idea of what you should be seeing when you click on join and then picking an account type. And this is where I'm not quite sure this page is matching what you're seeing. But in the past, we had two different memberships. We had a foundation membership and a community membership. And the only real difference was voting. Um, but voting is very important. It gives you a say on who's on your board, who's on your technical committee. Um, so if you do plan on staying around and being active in the community, I really do suggest um, taking a foundation membership Be, and it's both free. So there's no difference that way, but it does give you that ability to, to vote for your leaders. And actually everyone here, myself, Kendall and Jay have all held leadership positions within the community. So you can start as a developer and become a leader. And then sign the ICLA. And I don't have a picture of this because I'm not quite sure what it looks like anymore. But you will need to sign up for an agreement. And I believe Thomas Love already asked about this earlier. So yeah, just go ahead and read through it. Um, if you think your company will have an issue with it, um, maybe hold off on that part. You won't actually be able to participate today but you do have access to the slides to go ahead and run through everything later. Kendall, you're noisy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say something and then I started replying to somebody. Um, if while someone's signing the ICLA, they want to take a screenshot of what the like, what it looks like, that would be super awesome. And the account type page. Yeah, if, yeah. That would yeah, be great. so like, Four years ago, I created Stacky McStackface, um, who is an actual OpenStack Foundation member, but I didn't want to go ahead and create yet another test one to update these things. So if you can help us, you can get your contribu contributions. Do we need infra McInface? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work as well as Stacky McStackface. Yeah, I, I, we created him during the time when they were having that competition in England for the boat. Yep. All right. Even if you don't um, like actually manage to get the patches done, if you could take the screenshots and send them to us, that would also be really excellent. You, you oh aren't signing up for work by doing that. Yeah, so if you're not comfortable doing the patch yourselves, um, emailing one of us the screenshot will be more than happy to put the patch up, but this is a super way of getting your first patch in. All right, so the Ubuntu One login. There's two ways of getting it. You can go to storyboard.openstack.org or launchpad.net slash OpenStack. And the, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you who were here from the beginning, those are our two bug tracking systems. And it, once you click on login from either of those, you're gonna come up with a page that looks like this. Um, and you're going to actually click the first link that says, I don't have an Ubuntu One account, not a link, but the radio button. And then that will take you to this page. Um, and this is where you'll put your information in, and this is where we signed up Stacky McStackface. We'll just hold here while everyone gets that far. And even though we're 
doing Get in Gear today. If you really want to learn more and also about IRC and other things, please attend the two OUI sessions we've got later in the week. The first one is going to be on Thursday, which is Open Dev, and the second one, which will be going over tooling, is on Friday. So there will be some repeat of things on Friday, but there'll be some new information as well. And also more mentors, because we're a lot of fun. And it's a, the mentors are all members of the communities. We've got some PTLs, former PTLs, TC members. Um, so it's a great way to learn, meet people within the community because one thing we are missing out on this week is my favorite, the hallway track which allows you to just walk up to somebody after a talk and just introduce yourself and meet them and make those connections in the community, which is kind of how we all met. Now on the Ubuntu one, is it a problem if we already had one? No, not right, at I all. just logged into my existing account, didn't think it mattered. Nope, doesn't matter. Okay, all right, just making sure. Yeah, the one person we had trouble with with Grace Hopper because she was on the Windows machine was actually a former Rackspace employee. And the problem we had with her with her logins was just remembering what they were because um, she wasn't getting the verification emails. So we had to clean up some of her older emails so she could get them. All right, so Garrett. So now we're gonna go to HTTPS review.openstack.org and click on the sign-in. I believe I have a screen shot. So the sign-in is in the upper right-hand corner. We should probably up these, update these to be opendev.org. Okay. Just a thought. I, I guess I guess they're gonna keep the forwards forever though, so whatever. Yeah, I mean I did verify all links worked. I didn't okay. have to use the other links. And I already fixed everything that I found an issue on when we used this for Grace Hopper. Okay, and this is where your your Ubuntu One account is needed. So you're gonna have to verify your email as I just mentioned, and then you just log in. And you sign the ICLA, and this is very important. I have lots of screenshots and these are still accurate. Um, because if you do not sign the new contributor agreement, you will get a really unhelpful error message within Garrett. So you're gonna select the ICLA. Put in your information. Stacky lives in Austin, Texas. I do not live in Austin, Texas. I live near Austin, Texas. <laughs> um, and then you'll see now that it says you're verified as with an ICLA. So I wanna make sure everyone sees this verified status before we move on. like yes thing in Zoom once you're verified. Okay, now what with the screenshots? <laughs> or the like actual form that you fill out when you join the foundation and what was the other one? Did anybody screenshot it for us? Bonus points. If anyone says they got it, I'll get them an unreleased RDO t-shirt. Ooh, swag. I do have access to swag. <laughs> What's for breakfast, Amy? 
I'm assuming he's having um, fresh eggs and bacon and coffee. Ooh. He's sharing with all of us, right? I don't think he want his cooking. <laughs> you want to come up? This is Hippie. Hippie! Okay, go in your spot. All right, everyone have the agreement? We'll give this two more minutes. Watch movements. All right. All right. And as Eric kind of mentioned earlier from that um, Git review page, we're now going to upload our SSH key for Garrett. So we're going to create and get the public key. If you don't already have one, this is the command that will run it and the cat will allow you to see the pub key. Please, 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 the pub key, not your private key. Now, if anyone already has an SSH key and they don't want to create a new one, or they want to create a new one, I should say, there are some tricks to actually using two different keys. Um, but if you have a single key, that always does make it easier. All right, and this is the direct link to get to the SSH key part. I thought I got rid of that settings part. All right, um, so you can do this by going to where your name is in the upper right and then drop down and select settings. And then you'll notice where it says SSH keys on the left-hand side. I'll give everyone a few minutes. Um, and if you have any questions about creating your SSH key, um, let us know. I basically um, do not put a pa passphrase on. Normally, my current one does have a passphrase. I will tell you when I do a patch, I think I end up typing my passphrase at least four times. So um, there is a drawback to being more secure, but it is more secure and being more secure is always a good thing. Uh -uh. Sorry, a tennis ball was required. Other things you do not normally see at Summit, the requirement for tennis balls. Can we get a fresh batch of yeses if we're ready to move on? Actually, my yes is still from the previous step. Give me just a few more seconds. Uh -huh. I can clear all. So we're ready for fresh yeses.
Okay. Alrighty. Tomas, Hampus, and I, and I do apologize if I say anyone's names wrong. Belazaro. Because I also speak with a southern accent sometimes. Uh, hi, hello. Yes, I'm. I'm. Uh, yes, I'm going. <laughs> okay. Hi. And uh, you pronounce it correctly, Flizardo. Yeah, that means uh, happy in English. Ah, cool. His name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the OpenStack contribution process. So this is a typical development workflow. Um, and this is for the Nova project. This diagram is actually within the upstream documentation if anyone should ever want to see it themselves. But we kind of start up at the upper left hand corner with the upstream code. And what you would do in the, in the workflow is you would clone master. And one thing that's different about OpenStack is we don't fork. And I think that's important to mention. So we actually clone directly from the repositories. There's no forking, there's no pull requests. Um, Garrett is going to take care of all of that and the merging and it's so much easier than pull requests that once you get used to Garrett, I can't do a good pull request. I'm always having to merge and stash and do other things because I'm used to being able to just patch on top of patches. So you're gonna take your initial code and you're gonna clone it. And then you're going to have your environment. And one thing we do do is we do get branches. Um, and de depending on the project you use, there may be a requirement to, to maybe put the bug number in it. Um, I usually just do something that tells me what I'm working on. Um, so in our example here, we have git branch fix bug foo. And that's going to change our branch from master to Nova fix bug foo. We're going to fix our changes. We're gonna run any unit tests, talks, for example, um, and then we're gonna commit it. Well, you're gonna get add and get commit. And then you're gonna have your branch and you're going to type the command git review, which is going to set it up into Garrett. Now, it's important to note that there are different types of voting within the Garrett system. Everyone can plus one or minus one a patch. Um, thanks, this looks good. Um, you've got a little typo here. I would recommend you change the order of things to this. A negative one is not a bad thing. It's a conversation. Um, now I do make note that their core reviewers can plus two and negative two. Now, a plus two means from the core reviewer, yes, this is good to go, I approve it. Almost all projects require two core reviewers to plus two it. Um, in a smaller project, they may go ahead and do it with only one plus two. Okay, I need to deal with this. Multiple you just need a ball for problems. every single one of them. Well, basically, that's why I just did. I threw out a second ball. Uh -huh. um, that's the dad <laughs> growling at the sun. Um, all right. So now a negative two just means that maybe they want a spec, a blueprint. It's not what they're currently working on for this cycle. It may not be that we're never going to do that but it requires more and it's not really on the plan for this cycle. Um, so even if you have a negative two, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just may require more work. Now, when you get a negative one, so something you need to change, you're gonna go ahead and just make those suggested changes locally. And then you're gonna do a git commit amend. And what this is gonna do is it's going to amend it to your previous commit. Then you're gonna get review it again. Um, everybody loves it. So you get your plus twos 
and the core reviewers are also going to give it a plus one for workflow. Now, one thing I didn't mention previously is during that whole review process, Zool, which is our review system, is also going to review it. So the initial review from Zool is testing your code against what tests already exist within your project. But once you get the workflow, workflow you're going to be run through Zool again, and then it's testing it against the whole entire OpenStack code base. And that's what we mean by the gate queue. So we're now moving up to automated testing. You're being tested against everything. And then Garrett and Zool merge you into the code itself. And this is where we're different than a pull request because everything is automated from the point where there's a plus one for the workflow. Any questions? Because I know that was quick because I'm usually pretty quick. But I do like this diagram because it is updated to include Zool. We used to be on Jenkins and it is fairly straightforward in its flow. Um, so Launchpad. So this example um, out of Launchpad is one of my favorite examples of the community working together. It's from the Okada release. It's a documentation bug because um, Nova made some changes releasing Cells v2 and placement as being mandatory at that point. It was no longer optional. And if the documentation was totally left out, to put it bluntly, um, no one realized it till Okada was actually released. So everyone got together, the Nova team, the docs team, other people, and we figured out the steps that were needed and the documentation was done. So it's a really good example of communication. And like I said, negative ones are not bad. They are a form of conversation. <laughs> are you snickering? Or are you just calling? Positively. Okay. I mean, that, so, that's a good way of putting it. Dickinson that was saying that a minus one isn't a baseball bat to the face. Or was that like Griffith or I know oh, yeah. one of them said that. It was like, ah, uh, yes, I'm going to remember that forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the negatives in the request for changes aren't bad. Um, often it could just be simple, you know, reordering things or this is how we do it and it would work better like this. Um, depending on the project, a lot of times what I do lately is I'll ask the, the person putting up the patch, this is real simple, do you mind if I just fix it for you? Um, and that's just, so it doesn't go back and forth, but I can fix this in two seconds. It's just a rewording of a sentence. Let me go ahead and fix this for you. Um, because English isn't the first language for everybody. So, you know, having someone on a team that can go through and just fix things is often very helpful. Um, but like, I never do it without asking a person, at least the first time I do it. Um, that's just a courtesy I do. Um, All right, so you're, as we mentioned earlier, you use your Ubuntu One login to get into Launchpad. And we're gonna go over when to open or assign a bug and how bugs are created manually. Ha ha, okay. So this is an example of Launchpad for the Triple O project. Um, and you can see how there's different statuses and some of them are assigned and they've been there a while and so on and so forth. Actually, we do not have screenshots for all this. Okay, um, let me go ahead and bring up Launchpad. And we'll see if I can switch screens I'm sharing because that's an advantage of this. I 
actually, I think we do cover this later. Hang on a second. Before I break the stream. Here, how do I? No, we do not. Interesting. Okay. Um. See if this works. All right, can everyone now see Launchpad? Yep. Okay. So the process for creating a bug in Launchpad. We're gonna report a bug. These, these are not open stack. We'll do sender. <laughs> so you select the project you want to open the bug in. You type a summary. Um, back end not connecting. And you hit continue. And here you can see the sender mascot. Oh, all the discussion that went into that one. See, discussion that was good. like probably a couple hours worth of like PTG and yep. you know, mid cycle time. And there actually that was another cinder mascot before that one. Well, it's because right. the design the, team didn't understand the, our request. Yeah, the, the Ferrari stallion just was not our group. That was all one right. of those fun PTGs in uh, Fort Collins. Should we read anything into it being the horse's rear end? No, yeah, exactly. it, it's exactly that. It is a horse's exactly rear that. end. Hey, we, we, we control storage back ends. Uh, and the, the tail is a C. That was the thing they got in there that was that was brilliant. It's like, oh, it's a C, nice. And, and plus, if you know the group, we were a, a bunch of horses back ends at times. But they're lovable. Just oh, yeah. All right. So now you, you've, you've noticed that we have a list of possible bugs related to our summary. So at this point, you can make the decision whether one of these other bugs that already exist meet your needs or you can go ahead and scroll down and say, no, I need to create a new bug. Now, in as much as this is the actual live sender um, rep reporting, I'm not going to actually hit the button. Um, let's go ahead and click on one though. Yes, this is good enough for me. Oh, I just want to see the bug. Okay, fine, we'll find another bug. Oops. I just want to look at the bug. Okay. Oh, that's a fact. Wrong thing. Hey, glance. Okay, latest report. I just want to look at one so we can look at um, a little bit of triage stuff. So there's different statuses you can give to a bug. You can also give the importance and you can assign it. So if you're core, you might have permissions to assign to someone else or you can assign it to yourself. I mean, you can sign it to someone else if you're core, or you can assign it to yourself. All right, let's see if I can't get us back to. Yeah, I'll do this. Okay, we'll present again. Ah, perfect. Awesome. Okay, so it actually brought us back to where we were. And launch pack. Kendall, do you want to do storyboard? Can. I should have like waited to make a, a story, but yeah, I can um, <laughs> do that. Let me share my screen. So you need to enable screen sharing or make me co-host or something so that I can. Uh... 
Yeah, if you do the more thing, you can make me a co-host. Yeah, yeah, hang on. Now. <laughs> Done. Thank you. Preemptively, thank you. Sweet. Uh, yes. I want that one. Okay. You can see this beautiful uh, project. Um, yep. So in Storyboard, uh, the way things, it's more of a task tracking and task management tool than just bugs. Um, it was created by our, like the OpenStack community for the OpenStack community. So it is created like API first and it's easier to script against um, than like Launchpad. Um, and so as a result, this like, uh, lovely UI that we have is like the second priority after like the API. So um, basically when you have uh, you like log in, you have your like dashboard view and there are like, you know, things assigned to you. Um, there's also like your boards and your work lists because we have like this Kanban sort of set up for organizing work if you're interested in doing that. Um, and then you have things that you're subscribed to. Um, so if I have some new thing I want to make, I should actually be using the storyboard here so that I can make garbage ones. Um, we have like a, a test site and then the real site. Um, so if you're just messing around with storyboard, you want to use storyboard dash dev. And yes, there's like an invalid certificate because it's our development site. We don't actually run any production or put private things here. Um, it's, this is kind of like a sandbox to use basically. So, oh crap, I gotta log in. <laughs> you gotta log in, beautiful, Ubuntu one. Yes, that's me, that is my email address. Awesome. Um, so I'm gonna go make a story. And my story is that uh, all summit times and then you write a description um, <laughs> everyone should share the pain of time zone conversion together and then under a story um, you can have lots of different pieces of work um, so in like a project, say you want to implement some feature. Okay, well, that's probably uh, done in one repository, but then you have like documentation that needs to be updated and that might be in a different repository or maybe you need to make changes in two different projects to actually get your feature implemented. Well, the tasks are that work that needs to be done that's actually associated with a specific repository where the story is more of like the epic the thing that needs to happen if you're familiar with like you know agile and like uh uh all of the uh processes around that then you'd be familiar with uh that terminology but yeah so all summit times should be in utc say and i'll put that in the contributor guide repository because sure and then you can save your changes. It won't actually let you save until you have a project or repository associated with the task that you make. Um, so it's really important to have that. Um, and generally uh, you can just assign it to like center or whatever. And if it's in the wrong place, they'll like get it to the correct repository. Um, but Cinder is not actually on Storyboard right now, so that was kind of a bad example. Uh, ironic, ironic uses Storyboard at this point. There's a, a migration happening um, that as we get features added to Storyboard, uh, we're unblocking different projects so that they can migrate from Launchpad to Storyboard. And the reason why we're doing that is because Launchpad is basically at end of life with Canonical, they have maybe one con um, developer working part-time to keep it like running. Um, so they're not adding features and um, basically we have 
storyboard as a community developed tool to like take the place of that. And then also once we're completely migrated off of Launchpad and we can get rid of Ubuntu One and you just have your OpenStack ID for everything. And that will be a lovely, lovely day. Cause then you'll only have to make one account and you won't need to make two. Um, but so I have this story created now and I can say it affects another project. So maybe this one is like the training guides. If I can spell, or maybe we don't have training guides over in this test thing right now. Just make it against storyboard because we track storyboard problems in storyboard. Um, I don't know. Time. I got nothing. <laughs> My creativity is uh, limited at 7.15 in the morning for me. So you can add tasks that are associated with other repositories. You can add more tasks specific to that repository. And all of them get uh, these like uh, task IDs that we'll use in commit messages later once we talk about those, which I'm guessing is coming, right, Amy? Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, so there's also like this tags. You don't really need to worry about tags when you create them, but in the future, when you're more involved in the community, you might be like, um, some some projects are really particular about differentiating bugs from new features, even though they're both technically just code changes. Like that's the work; it's a code change, or a docs change, or what have you. So they they'll be like, uh, ironic bug or ironic feature. Um, or they'll say like what milestone they're trying to get it in by or if it needs to be backported to a different release or that sort of thing. So that's kind of what those are for. If you're interested in a story that somebody else has made, you can subscribe to it and then it'll show up in that like dashboard view that we saw earlier. And all of these get organized um, by the individual projects that use storyboard into the, the work lists and the boards. So if I go back to the regular story. All right, board. just a warning, Kendall, we're at 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Well, I okay. Well, there are lots of things. I could talk about storyboard forever, but that's the basics is you create the story for the thing and it will be organized by the team, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. All right, let's see if I can grab it back. I can stop sure. participants. Oh, fine. Make it hard. You should be able to just click share screen again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, share. All right. So now we're up to where we're going to file a bug. And we're going to use this URL, which is launchpad.net slash getting Garrett training. So this is our own little sandbox. Don't worry about it affecting anything. You can do whatever you want in there. And then as I walk through previously, we're going to report a bug. We'll enter the bug summary. I knew I went over this somewhere and provide further information on the bug. Um, extra options are things like adding tags. We're not going to deal with that. Our status will come up as new. Our importance is undecided. And then you're going to assign the bug to yourself. So I'll give everyone two minutes to do that. And this is kind of why we never get to those advanced exercises. Because we're going really good on time and then we spend time talking. So we kind of configured Git earlier, but now we're going to do our actual configuration. So if you didn't do it previously, you're going to git config and you're going to say global user.name and then it's going to be your first name and your last name in quotes. And then we're going to do something very similar. And again, this is one of the ones that was on the um, etherpad earlier we're going to set our user.email.
And then finally, we're going to configure our git review dot username. Um, and then you'll place your username there. Now your username in git Garrett cannot be changed later. So hopefully you pick something nice, but you can change the display name. And one thing we do in OpenStack Ansible is we have our name and then in a bracket, we put our IRC handle and that allows us to be tracked. Like if we put a comment and you want to find us on IRC later to ask questions, you know who to look for because in IRC, we're all logged in with our NICs. For That's example, a really, spots. really good idea. Yeah, it is. We should like encourage everybody to do that. We are leaders in OSA. Um, go so for example, now. Kendall's Diablo underscore Roja. Ro You're Rojo, you should be Roja. Um, no, because Diablo is masculine. So Rojo has to be masculine. And then J is Jungle Boy J. Um, and then run a git config list and this will show you what you have configured. And then we discussed earlier cloning and branching and we're going to be using Sandbox. So again, you're gonna be dragging down code and putting code up that's not going to affect anything. So you can do whatever you want to it. So git clone HTTPS colon slash slash opendev.org. See this one I updated slash opendev slash sandbox. And that'll be a repository. Um, I will warn you that you may have some issues later along the line if there's any conflicts, but it's sandbox. Um, so it's nothing against what you may be doing. It's just the fact that it's sandbox. And then once you've cloned down, you're gonna CD into the repo with CD sandbox. And we're going to set up Git review. So I'll give everyone a minute or two to get to this point. Okay. So when you get to the Git review part, I went ahead and brought up the commands. So for Mac and Linux, it's going to be Git review dash S on Windows. If we do have anyone using Windows, it is just Git review. And then you can do a Git remote update to set your remote. doing weird things and it's because Garrett was down. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I guess I'm not doing that change today then. No, don't, don't play with things. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and get checkout master. So this is gonna be the master version of the sandbox. Um, if for some reason you're out of sync, you might do a git pull um, dash dash FF only is a fast forward of origin master. And then as we were talking earlier, we're gonna do a, we're gonna branch. So the command to branch is git checkout dash B, which stands for branch. And in this case, we're saying bug in the bug ID slash the bug ID, but it could be anything like in the um, workflow, a uh, fix bug foo. Um, so what, it's mainly for you to be helpful to yourself to know what this particular branch was for, unless your project actually specifies um, that they want the bug bug ID or feature and a feature, you know what's in the feature. So they might de designate their branches like that. All right, so now we're gonna create, commit and verify a patch. And the link down here is to some example git commit messages. So check those out, not necessarily for this exercise, but in the future. And we're just gonna make a quick little <coughs> file. So we're just catting into my test file and, and a file um, 
but you can do anything you want here to create a new file. And we're gonna add some unique text. And then we're gonna do a get status and it should show you in green. Yes, in green. No, that's the once it's added. If you do get status, it's gonna show you that you have a new file. And we're gonna do a git add my test file to then add it. So it's being tracked. Now I'm going a little quick because I'm trying to get us back on track. So if anyone has any questions or anything, please type it in the chat um, and just let us know and we'll slow down and help you out. Now we're gonna run git status again. And like I mentioned previously, you should now see that your added file is now green. If you had removed a file, it would be on the bottom as red. Because sometimes as part of a patch, you are gonna remove content. Now we're gonna do a git commit dash A. The dash A actually stands for add. So even though we added it previously, this would make sure anything new was added into our commit. And as I mentioned previously, should you need to work on something you've already put up, but you had comments on, so you're changing things, you're gonna use the amend and you can use the dash A and the amend together. A git show will see, show you your status and everything. And then once you're ready, git review. And git review is going to send it up to Garrett. And I'm gonna hold here while everyone gets to this point. You at least need to do the creating of a file, the git add, the git commit, and the git review. And if something went wrong in your configuration, this is where it's gonna show up when you hit Git Review. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all the checks. And once you have successfully get reviewed, go ahead and put a yes. If you are having any errors, go ahead and click no. And just for reference, the Zool system we've mentioned is also another Open Infra Foundation project. It was originally just an infra project within OpenStack and it spun out to its own top level project. We've got a couple yeses in the list. 
We'll wait for one or two more before moving on. We kind of call this lazy consensus. Everyone doing okay? Any issues? Actually doing pretty well. Yeah, I saw you were one of my pluses. Ivan, Jeffrey, Tomaz. Seder, I think you came in late, so I'm not sure where you are in the scheme of things. And I know Elvis is configured. All right, as we only have 16 minutes left, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So the Garrett and the Zool workflow. You should have noticed when you hit Git review and it went successfully that you received a URL that looks like this, https colon slash slash review.openstack.org slash pound slash C slash an ID. And that's your review. And here's an example so you can see where the number came back. Now you can also keep an eye on Zool and we call that gate checking. And you can do that at status.openstack.org. And I think it'll automatically take you to Zool, but you might need to put Zool on there. And what you might do need to go there for is if, for example, you put your patch up an hour ago and you still don't have a vote back from Zool and you just want to see where you stand on things. Um, it could be that the gate is very busy um, in which case you'll see other patches ahead of yours, or it could be that there's actually an issue. So that's why you go to the status page. So let's go ahead and look and see what a review looks like. And this is actually from that um, example documentation on cells V2 and placement. So as you can see, there is the owner for the patch, um, but there can also be other committers. Um, so say for example, I saw something and you were okay with it and I just put a patch on top of it. Or in the case of someone goes on vacation and someone else needs to take over it. So there can be more than one person who's running the commit. And then all the reviewers are listed there. Um, and as you can see, I'm the only one who has their IRC NIC listed there. So I'm easy to find on IRC to ask any questions. Um, the project that it, the patch is in for is listed there. Um, and then different information, the code reviews, the individual code reviews. Um, I am not core on OpenStack manual, so I can only plus one or minus one. Um, so the two cores that were involved here are Alexandra Settle and Lana. Um, and then Lana gave, I mean, Alex gave the plus one for the workflow. And this is old enough that we were Z Jenkins versus Zool. So you can see Jenkins gave the um, plus two there. So Jenkins said, okay, I've run through everything. This is passing, it can be merged. And then you can see all the comments down below scroll. Okay. So um, again, you can see all the conversations. If you looked at the whole entire review, you would actually see everything. Now, a couple of things I'm just going to make note of on the upper right-hand corner is patch sets. You can actually click there and pull down different versions of the patch that have been worked on um, in case you need to backtrack something, cherry pick or whatever. And then Zool, this is just a copy of the status page. So you can see that there are 
different projects that are currently running, their timing, um, what's in line and so on. So here we actually are at the additional exercises, but I'm not quite sure that everyone's actually configured and ready to go. Um, so one thing we could also do at this point, um, hang on, I'm having this great week on following along, so go ahead. Currently we're installing ticket for our first one. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. I don't necessarily read at the same time. I've got too many monitors going. Um, so at this point, what we could do is everybody could pass, like put their review link in the chat and someone else can do a review. So you get that feeling of working through a review. Um, we could go to the additional exercises, which is um, making changes to an existing patch help people finish getting configured. What do you all need from us? Um, so far, I mean, it, it seems pretty straightforward. I guess maybe finishing the review would be the part that I'm not familiar with because I mean I've used Git in other in other places, so that part of it I'm I'm good with. Okay, um, Eric and Hampus, because you both have the yeses checked, do you want to go ahead and put your review links in the chat, and we'll just focus on those two reviews, and everyone can go ahead and log in and review them, and work through the process and ask any questions. But and and can, if you've used Git, um, reviews in Garrett are so much easier. <laughs> so much easier. So much easier. It's. I still am not entirely sure when I'm reviewing in Git if I've done it right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even sure if I have to. It, I know for a fact I don't do it right when I have to put up a second patch. Oh, yeah. If anybody can explain that to me. <laughs> That would be oh, awesome. Great, oh, can. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. I've been trying to get my team to move to Garrett internally and it hasn't happened yet. Garrett's actually not hard to set up. All right, let's see if I can get a window here. Oh, I didn't put it in the right window, but I guess move this down here where I'm sharing with you all. All right, so I'm not currently logged in, so we'll fix that. But everyone can see Eric's review here. Or could until I... Go me. Yes, that's me. Oh, Jay. <laughs> All right. So this is Eric's um, patch that he put up and how we would review this. So click on the commit message. And what, what some, hey, he's already got. So you can like put a comment here, like, Please capitalize patch. Not that you would, but just to have something to say. And this is one of the, the reasons why we really, really love Garrett. Stand up, get out, grab coffee when it is a sample patch from. So, oh. Huh. Somebody used the same. Well, we have multiple of my test files, probably. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, why are we changing this? So, um, yeah, so I could then give it a negative one if I felt like I needed to, just because I put that comment there. Um, if I really didn't feel strongly about my comment even, 
I can still give it a plus one or a plus two. You know, and, and something we might do is if you need to, you know, the comment could have been, if you need to do another patch, go ahead and capitalize this. In other words, I'm saying it's not really important, but if you're going to be doing this, you know, putting something else up again, you know, go ahead and make this change. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a plus one because I'm nicer. See, so that's how it shows a negative one and a plus one. Um, I'm going to actually, this is another reason why I really, really like Garrett. Because I can just come up here, like if there is a, a quick fix. Yeah. I can just make that change, close it. Now I wouldn't necessarily do this for code unless it's something really simple, um, but I do it for documentation all the time. And then I publish it. And now you can see where we now have two names. So we have Erica as the owner and I'm the uploader. And one reason why I did this is I wanted to demonstrate this. So you can actually do reviews against a specific um, patch. Oh, you didn't know that. Didn't I know that. hadn't noticed that before. I've definitely done this by accident, and that's the only reason I know it's there. I there was some other way that I would get it. You could do if, it here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's normally where I would do it, but that that's nice to know we can do that. Yeah. The mentor so becomes mentee. So again, reasons why we love Garrett. <laughs> um, Not get lab. Files can still just go up. So does this answer any questions about Garrett and how much easier it is than doing a pull request? Yeah, I, I do agree. <laughs> Isn't because I did a, I did a one character patch for Seth, and because I, they asked for a change and I went to do it kind of like I normally would do it, um, they weren't happy because it showed too many commits on it. I oh, finally just yep. like walked away. I I couldn't figure out how to fix it, and it, it was literally a one character change from a another open source projects core reviewer and I couldn't figure it out because this is so easy so handy wow yeah yeah the uh, the push model definitely jives with my brain much more than the pull model it just seems like there are so many extra steps because you have to like fork the repository and then clone your own repository uh, version of that fork and then do the change and then push it up and then do the pull request it's like Garrett does all of that, but hides it from you. So you just clone the repo and then push, and then it exists in that middle area without yeah. you having to do all of the extra steps and go between. Some and a reverse pull request, so you keep your fork up to date. Yep. But yeah, it's very easy to, even though you're branching, to have multiple branches then in one pull request. Yep. I'm at, I now have notes on how to fix it after I break it because I kind of messed up something from RDO because that part of RDO wasn't in Garrett, like the website, and I just kept making changes. <laughs> and every time I'd make a new P PR, it would have the files from the previous work. Um, well, and it so, tried yeah. to what was that? Sorry. What are what are these buttons for up up here? Okay. That I put the so um, two of you are working on the exact same thing, which happened to me recently. So one of us will abandon um, because you don't need the same thing, or just change of direction might require you no know, cause and abandon. The cherry pick is say for example we just released Victoria. So we're now master branch, but we want that change to exist in Victoria as well. 
So we would cherry pick it. Now, if it's soon enough and the code is similar enough, you may not have to modify it. And it's just a matter of cherry picking it and getting it retested and, and merged. But sometimes you do have to do some more code work on a cherry pick. Um, rebase is more than one person is working on the same code. So it just replays kind of on top of code and make sure everything is good and can be merged. Um, I've never used follow-up. Neither have I. I haven't and either. The, <laughs> the cherry pick and the rebase really only work in a perfect world. Um, <laughs> so if other things have changed, uh, it's likely that you're going to need to do the rebase or the cherry pick in a local branch and then and then push it back up. Because uh, obviously, okay. if there are any conflicts, it, it's not smart enough to deal with all that. And, and sometimes it will come back and it'll time out. I mean, this is not doing anything. And you just type in recheck as a comment and it'll rerun it through the Zool processes. Um, right. So you'll often see you know, a bunch of rechecks in there and you don't have to do anything else to it, but just type recheck for it to go back through the system. I mean, but, it is smart enough to do that. But please, please make sure that you look and it's not something like I've completely broken the code. <laughs> yeah. I mean, usually on a timeout. But you're right. So if, if it's like failing, you know, the Python tests, then take a look and make sure you don't have a code issue before rechecking. Is it, then it's just going to fail again. Right. All right. So that is 945, which is the end of the session. Does anyone have any other questions or anything else they want to cover? It was typing, not muted again. You you need a quieter keyboard. <laughs> no, it's so good. Like, I encourage you to get a keyboard, a mechanical keyboard with blue switches. It feels so good to type. <laughs> it, I like, it can't sounds, even explain it. It sounds like the keyboard I had when I started at IBM, you know. It probably years. is close <laughs> to that, yeah. But mine's, mine's very pretty. Oh, let me see. Well, with blue switches, it's very close to that IBM buckling spring, but, but yes, I totally agree. Mechanical key switches for the win. Yeah, they're <laughs> so good. All right. So, so the people were, were very quiet um, in the <laughs> discussions that because things went well, at least a, a yes check would be good. Yeah, th this is the one hard part about doing this. And like I said, one of the reasons why this is my favorite thing to do at Summit is I walk around the room and I can see when someone's having an issue and you know, you make that connection and you, and you, you help them through it. And unfortunately, it's really hard to do that um, remotely. So I do appreciate y'all showing up and sticking with us through this. We try to make it as fun as possible um, because the community is fun. You know, we're all from different projects, but we're family who sees each other once or twice a year. Um, and that's how <laughs> I like to describe our community. So um, because our problem. emails are in the etherpad if you need to reach any of us. Um, I'm spots on IRC. If I don't answer, I'm on a bouncer. Um, so, but I will try to respond to you on IRC when I get back. Um, I've even been known to IRC off the pony, so you never know where I'll answer you from. But thank you all for coming. Um, again, Open OpenStack Upstream Institute, because it still is OpenStack Upstream Institute, it has not been renamed, will be Thursday and Friday. Um, so if you did run into any issues and you just want to go over it again, we'll be working on things similar to this on Friday. And should we advertise the... Um uh upstream irc channel for yeah. people if they have additional questions we're in yeah. there as well so uh on irc it's hashtag openstack dash upstream dash institute on freenode um and i'm jungle boy j and there's diablo rojo we're we're all out there 
uh, feel free to ping us if you have a question. I put the channel in the Zoom chat too, if you want ah, to. Excellent. Take Thank one. you. All right. So, like, I I haven't used IRC in like 15 years, almost. <laughs> it's the same. It hasn't so, changed. <laughs> yeah, and and I figured that, but I mean the the client landscape is different. Any suggestions yeah. on clients? So for a desktop client, I use HexChat, but I have an IRC cloud account also because of the like free bouncer. Well, free bouncer. It's like free for a month of history. And then if you want like all of the history and to be signed in forever, it's like $15 a year or something. And they yeah. have a web client and a app for your phone. So I'm like always available there. And then I just use HexChat when I'm on. There's there's a Windows client for IRC Cloud as well. Um, that's what I use. I, I'd recommend it if you're planning to continue to be active. Um, other words, yeah, hex chats, easy way to go. And we, we cover that more in the Upstream Institute um, as well and help get yep. that set up. That same like contributor guide that you were walking through has a section on setting up IRC that you can go through and it'll like explain as if you've never done IRC before, or it's been a long time since you did IRC last. <laughs> like how to register your NIC and things, because you do need to be yeah. registered to be on the OpenStack channels, because we had some really bad spammers. Um, so we did lock things down. Um, but there's instructions on how to walk you through it. So, yeah, and again, easy. we'll be going over that on Thursday or Friday. I think Thursday. Are you saying X chat like X Men or H H E X? H like hex. X. Hex like hex. a spell. <laughs> I'm on Mac. I use Lime Chat. Um, I also use Lime Chat on my phone, but I run a ZNC bouncer on my own. Bouncers are very very nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank, thank you. I appreciate coming. it. Yeah, yeah it was a great everyone. session. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you. Take care. Have a good rest of the summit. And hopefully we'll meet you in the future. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this one's